queen could be left facing a difficult situation were she to step away from her duties because of the current arrangements she has, according to Richard Deaton. Under the current strategy, Prince Charles and Prince William would be first in line to take over from Her Majesty in the event of an emergency but Prince Harry and Prince Andrew would be next in line if neither were to be available. Both the Duke of Sussex and the Duke of York are believed to still hold the roles of councillors of state despite stepping down from their other roles within the royal family. Mr. Eden told Palace Confidential, This is the established fact that Prince Andrew and Prince Harry are still two of the four councillors of state now. This is not some sort of esoteric thing that doesn't matter. What it means is that if the Queen can't carry out her duties, if she becomes ill, she's in hospital, then someone carries them out on her behalf. The other two councillors of state are Prince Charles and Prince William. But say they were abroad for whatever reason, by law, it would be the next two adults in line to the throne Andrew and Harry who would be called upon. He continued, This is unthinkable so what I was told this week is the palace is thinking what can we do about this but unfortunately, it's in the law so they would need to bring a new act of parliament in order to change things. I mean I suspect they'll just try and fudge it by making sure that Charles and William are never out of the country. A royal source told, it is a genuine problem that the palace is looking to address. Can you imagine the Duke of York having to sign official documents, for example, because the Prince of Wales and the Duke of Cambridge were both abroad, and the Queen became ill? It's not an exaggeration to say it could put the monarchy in jeopardy. Dr. Craig Prescott, a constitutional expert at Bangor University, told, I think this should be looked at if it isn't being done already by the palace, because they certainly would want to avoid a situation where the monarchy becomes a problem for the government. The monarchy should be thinking 6-12 months ahead, arguably even 2-5 years ahead, where possible. You just need the right, or wrong set of circumstances, to occur at once for there to be an issue. As we saw during COVID, with Prince Charles and Prince William were reportedly infected at around the same time which could have left them incapacitated. Andrew and Harry could only be removed from the roles once a new law has been implemented. However, the palace could also include Princess Anne and Prince Edward as the next councillor of state replacing Prince Harry and Prince Andrew. Giles Brandreth, a friend of the late Prince Philip, also suggested Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall could be considered for the position. He said, Camilla is already doing much more than she used to do, she is regularly standing in for the Queen. This issue is to do with councillors of state. If the Queen is unable to fulfill her duties, a councillor of state has to do it. Another news, Prince Harry behaves unpredictably towards the press on royal tours, an inside source has revealed. According to British journalist, Robert Hardman, there are usually about 40 reporters, photographers, and film crews camped out at each of the royals' engagements. This tight-knit cohort is managed by eight Buckingham Palace employees who are tasked with organizing the press coverage of royal family members, with the exception of Prince Charles and Duchess Camilla, who have their own team at Clarence House. While these journalists have full permission from the firm to capture the tours, their presence isn't always appreciated by the royals themselves. The Duke of Sussex, in particular, has been known to struggle with the glare of the cameras, having developed a negative perception of the British press since the death of his mother in 1997. Princess Diana was tragically killed in a car crash when Harry was just 12, after being chased by paparazzi in Paris. The devastating loss, which resulted in no prosecution, left the royal heir deeply distrustful of the media. Camilla Tomini has now revealed how this traumatic incident appears to influence the prince's treatment of reporters on overseas tours. Speaking last month on the Women with Balls podcast, the Telegraph editor revealed that the Duke's attitude towards the press can be hard to predict. I've been on jobs with Harry where he's been angry with us and ignored us, she said, before recalling a positive encounter with the father of two in 2016. I remember being in Barbados with him and I was on the road. Uh. He kept on beckoning me like, Camilla. You need to hear this. I don't know what they were talking about, palm oil or something. I'm there with my notebook, thinking oh, he's being very friendly. So, it's a bit of a hot and cold environment. Camilla added that other members of the royal family can also be dismissive with the press, but did not provide any names. Sometimes you can be on the back of the plane and a royal comes down for a chat, she said. Sometimes they act as if you shouldn't even be there.